Hello, welcome to an introduction to in-play NanoBeacon technology. Before delving into NanoBeacon technology, I will give a brief overview of the rest of the presentation. I'll give some background on the evolution of Bluetooth, historical data for the active RFID market size will be given, and the pain points of active RFID development will be exposed. Then, I will describe how NanoBeacon alleviates the existing active RFID pain points. I will take a look at the addressable market at large and then focus on two use cases, wireless sensors and active RFID tags. I will then touch on the security features of NanoBeacon because we recognize the importance in safeguarding the data of our customers. Finally, I will give a more detailed description of the value delivered by InPlay's IN100 SoC, the first of its kind in the NanoBeacon lineup. The Bluetooth standard has been constantly evolving since its first commercial appearances in the early 2000s. Classic Bluetooth provided personal area networking capability at a fairly large power consumption. The addition of the low energy specification started in 4.0 enabled new devices with small form factor batteries and low data rate requirements. Bluetooth 5 added support for a higher data rate as well as a lower data rate, but with longer range, relative to the BLE4 standard. As range and connection robustness are greatly improved, Bluetooth 5 is being used to improve the capabilities of smart homes, offices, factories, malls, and hospitals. It comes as a standard feature on most smartphones and tablets since 2018. That is the driving force in the adoption in peripherals. Historical and projected sales revenue for the RFID industry is shown on the left. The market is on the order of $10 billion. The breakdown of the market shows that active RFID and real-time location services is the smallest fraction of the market, roughly $400 million to $500 million. We have to ask ourselves why. Why is the active RFID portion of the market small and growing so slowly? The answer is cost. Cost to manufacture devices, including components like chips and passives, batteries and packaging, are orders of magnitude higher than their passive device counterpart. Development cost is also high because of the complexity of microcontroller applications, especially with regard to standards like Bluetooth. Despite the costs, active RFID is useful for communicating over longer distances without the need for a person to use an interrogator. This makes them ideal for high value assets where the cost of the active RFID is a fraction of the item being tracked. Active RFIDs also can handle more complex tasks like logging environmental conditions such as temperature, which is valuable in some supply chain logistics. The challenges for active RFID development are mainly cost and power consumption while the clear benefits are their longer range, potential interactivity, and capability to log environmental conditions. Current active RFID products are just too costly and complex to use at a large scale, until now, with in-place introduction of NanoBeacon technology. Here is a comparison of existing active RFID solutions to NanoBeacon along five metrics. Power consumption, cost, radio range, form factor, and standardization. First, existing solutions require large 1,000 to 2,000 milliamp hour batteries in order to last for three to five years. Nanobeacon can last five years or more on a battery one tenth that size. The cost of existing solutions is typically $15 per tag or more while tags built with NanoBeacon technology have a price target of $1 or less. NanoBeacon devices can communicate up to a couple hundred meters without an external PA. Existing solutions requiring large batteries have bulky form factors about the size of a hockey puck. NanoBeacon products can scale down with their smaller batteries, making quarter size devices possible. In addition, NanoBeacon is Bluetooth compliant, making many smartphones and tablets a potential scanner. It supports Eddystone and iBeacon, as well as proprietary protocols. 
And did I mention no software programming is necessary? The addressable market for NanoBeacon is broad, from retail to asset management, and from sensors to healthcare, there are many possibilities. Imagine walking into a large store and getting feedback on your phone about how close you are to the item you came to purchase. Merchants can push notifications for sale items tailored specifically to a target customer. In asset management, tags can be used for auto check-in and check-out for high-value items, starting from raw materials all the way through finished goods. I think there is a big opportunity in pharmaceuticals here. Imagine fresh seafood or a vaccine traveling by truck, boat, or plane where the temperature and humidity are logged every 15 minutes or less. On farms, a herd of cattle may be corralled through a gate with a scanner that not only identifies and counts the cows, but also logs their body temperature in order to monitor their health. In hospitals, I see many potential applications from patient ID tags to medical asset management. NanoBeacon was designed with sensors in mind. There are a host of exciting sensors that enable insight into the world around us. In addition to temperature and humidity, sensors can monitor carbon monoxide, strain, particulates, light, water, sound, motion, you name it. A NanoBeacon device can be configured to send a sensor's data at a fixed interval, for example, once every 10 seconds. Alternatively, it can be configured to send data only when the sensor output meets a threshold, which we refer to as event-driven advertising. At InPlay, we built a demonstration for wireless temperature monitoring. We used an IN100 chip, a temperature sensor, and a 25 milliamp hour paper battery integrated on a substrate with a total width less than a coin. The IN100 was configured to send a beacon acting as an alert if the temperature exceeded a threshold and to stop sending the alert if the temperature dropped below the threshold. This wireless temperature monitor was built with minimal hardware and cost. Applications that need secure wireless transmission of identifying data are a great fit for NanoBeacon technology. The identifying data is written into the IN100's one-time programmable memory, and the privacy of that sensitive ID data is protected through authentication and encryption mechanisms. NanoBeacons can transmit directly to a smartphone, tablet, or any other Bluetooth-capable gateway which can then access Wi-Fi or cellular networks that open up enterprise-grade cloud applications. Bluetooth's ubiquity is a strength, but also a potential security vulnerability when it comes to hacking. At InPlay, we take our customer security seriously. As a result, the IN100 has hardware encryption and authentication mechanisms. IDs can be unique and dynamically changed. And in the unlikely event that a private key stored in the beacon is compromised, the beacon can be removed and delisted from the authentication server. Inclay's IN100 is the first chip in the NanoBeacon family. It was designed with low power consumption, small size, small external component count, and ease of use as the foremost objectives. There is no CPU which eliminates the need for firmware application development. Instead, the control of the subsystems is managed by a carefully designed state machine, which takes configuration settings either from a SRAM or one-time programmable memory. We've written a configuration user interface to make configuration straightforward for common use scenarios. A sensor ADC is available on-chip to process sensors with analog outputs, a flexible UART is available to interface to a controlling MCU. For sensors with digital outputs, there are two interfaces, pulse counting over one wire and I2C. On-chip load switches are available for cutting leakage power to external devices. I'd like to dive a little deeper into some of the IN100's technical value propositions here. 
It is compliant to the Bluetooth standard. It operates in the 2.4 gigahertz ISM band with a verified range of over 200 meters at one megabit per second. A proprietary long range mode has a verified range of up to 350 meters. The nominal RF output power is zero dBm. It consumes 3.5 microamps at a three second advertising interval or 650 nanoamps average at a one minute interval. To talk with the outside world, it has a UART, one wire pulse count interface, I2C, and the sensor APC. For external components, it requires one 26 MHz crystal and one decoupling capacitor. The RF matching is integrated on the die, so no external matching components are needed for a 50 ohm antenna. It supports a very wide single power supply from 1.1 volts to 3.6 volts. So it's possible to maximize the operating lifetime of common batteries. We're excited to offer it in two package varieties, a DFN8 for the simplest applications or a QFN20 where an application needs more interfaces. The i100 is the enabling chip for nanobeacon technology which we think will open up some exciting applications in active RFID, asset management, and the Internet of Things. Samples and evaluation kits are available as of December 2020. Thank you.